let us start with a few topics uh, before everyone joins in full strength. Painful, it doesn't show. Should sign in. Okay. I have two factor authentication on my phone, so I have to wait for that. All right, so I'm logged into my Azure account. Let's check the subscription status. Around 8.6 and predicted is around 11, so I'm still under $10 after two to two and a half weeks. Not bad. Um, because I keep canceling all the things that I do. So anyways, coming back to uh, some topics that I want to cover real fast today. Um, I don't have any um, particular notes or something that I found for that. So it's highly uh, recommended that you watch, watch it out. What's the purpose of it? And this, will be covered in class so hopefully it will um, and i will be asking a couple of questions in the exam for this topic so you might not have a full slides available but uh, as long as if you have followed it and that is why it's good that it gives me a little bit of indication that people are listening to the recorded lectures as well because sometimes people commit and they don't listen to it and if they don't uh, that gives me an idea that, uh, I, yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't followed properly. So that's good. Uh, yeah. So let's, let me start that. I want to create, uh, what is process automation? First of all, what is your idea about automation? Mm -hmm. Could be auto like automated, automatic. Yes. So good. Uh, do you know any utility that we use in Windows that do things automatically for us? Any utility that you can recall? No one knows about it. Okay. There's a utility in Windows which is called Task Scheduler. Does it ring the bell? Task Scheduler. So here you can schedule the tasks. Hopefully it works and I'll write it here. Right. Task scheduler. My task scheduler has so many processes in the background running. Some that I want, some I, that I don't want. But as you can see, there are some tasks that are created by some programs, which tells me that 
there are some processes that kicks in in certain time or event of the system. So what do you mean by trigger or what do you mean by event? Like if you have important things to do. Event means at a particular instinct of time, certain thing happens. So if you look at trigger or event, let's say I don't worry about what's happening inside this, but if you look at this, this task has a particular time that it happens every day at 7 a.m. Uh, 7 p.m. So if my computer is shut down, this task will never happen. But if it, my computer is turned on, which usually it is, this is happening every day, 7 p.m. without disturbing me. It's a good thing or a bad thing. As long as I know about what's happening, that's a good thing. Most of the time, we can we can see that what what is the essential part of our our, our, our what are the what are the instances that we can think of at which the triggers can happen? It could be it could be uh, at the system reboot. Okay, do this thing at seven or when the time reaches certain time of the clock, then we can trigger. When you close down a certain program, then that trigger should happen. So we can think of a lot, lot, of, lot of triggers. Let's look at some of the triggers here. In the task scheduler, I can create a basic task for myself. Okay, let's see, we'll create a small task. And we, we, what we will be doing, that, that small idea, we will take it to Azure. So I will be really quick on this. So I will open up a notepad. And here you go. I want to copy the path of the notepad file. So I want to see where is my notepad or some other program. Some other program that will work. Uh, I want to see the path of it. Okay, so usually notepad is under Windows directory because it's it comes with Microsoft Windows. So if I go C drive, Windows, and I'll see notepad, here you go. Notepad is here, notepad application. So it doesn't, it doesn't come as a strange to me that notepad is a system program that is installed when the windows is installed so it's every windows since windows 95 has notepad program even windows 3.1 notepad is not going away it's a very basic program right we all know that so let's say what is the path of it so i'll just copy the path of this program what is the actual path of it it's under c drive windows directory there's a program called notepad.exe so if I'll go ahead and show more options and go to properties, I can see this program is under C windows. Okay, so let's copy this path, close it. I'm going to close it. So I'll say, I want to create a basic task, which I'm going to disable after showing the demo. And I want to say the name of it, open notepad. daily open a notepad for me or if it will be weekly open a notepad for me or monthly or one time when the computer starts these are the task triggers these are the events at which we want the task to happen so let's say i wanted to open up daily for me and i'll say at 5.46, right now time is 5.44, so it has automatically picked up the time for me. So at 5.46, please turn on this program for me and it should happen every day. Start a program. What program? This is deprecated means this is getting away from Windows in later versions, but it is still available, I think. I haven't tried the other options. 
action. What program you want to open? Notepad. So I want to open a Notepad program. And I am at 5.45, so I have to be quick. And I'll say next and say finish. So automatically, I don't know, I have three screens, so I don't know which screen the Notepad will open. But at the moment, just close everything. I'm going to close every Notepad program. And at 5.46, you will see as soon as the time ticks over to 546, there is a notepad window that will appear at the bottom of my screen. So let's just wait for one more minute or 30 more seconds and this will occur. But basically what this essence is, any program that or any event that you want to happen daily on your system or weekly or monthly, or yearly, here you go. At 5.46, as I was speaking and talking to you guys, Notepad program automatically opened for me. So Task Scheduler is an automatic robot for me, is an automatic program for me. It's not a robot word should I use, but it's an automatic program, automatically triggered on my system. So there, how good it will be that if somebody says every morning when I come to office, can I have a report on my email or on the network drive? Can you think of a scenario? A lot of time people ask this. Manual, you run it manually, but you don't want to run it manually. You want them to be emailed out automatically. You don't, you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night 6 a.m. in the morning and emailing them so that they have it at 8 a.m. when they start the office, right? So how convenient it will be if something happens like this in Microsoft Azure, very convenient. This is a very small example of me just opening one program. Think of it, think of it. SQL Server has a lot of orders been placed yesterday as all the records of all the customers. I want to see what are the new customers added. When I come in the morning in the office, I am the CEO. I want to know what are the new clients that we have acquired or how, or if I'm a food delivery service, I want to know how many deliveries we made yesterday, right? Very good program to have. If somebody can write a query for me and put that in the task scheduler, I will get that report every morning and I don't have, and my IT department does not have to be visited because it will trigger at 7 a.m. in the morning. But when I will open the doors for the office at 8 a.m. and shoot up, fire my email up, I will have that in my inbox sitting. That's one advantage that I'm talking about. Lot of processes can be automated. Backups can be automated. Um, important reports can be automated. System updates can be automated. Lot of things because certain events will trigger at certain date and time. Now tomorrow, when I will not, when I will be conducting the class at five forty six, this will appear again because this is set to be ready. Status is ready. So my computer is constantly monitoring what time it is, what time it is. Is it 5.46 or not? Is it 5.46 p.m. Uh, every day? No, it's not. It has already passed for today. So this event will not happen again, this today. But tomorrow it will happen again. So I can automate a few more processes. So this is called process automation. And Windows has this utility forever in Windows called Task Scheduler. So if you have made your program in any programming language that is benefiting you or you want some reminder to open for you that this is the to-do list for today. When you fire up your computer, you don't need, need a sticky notepad on your monitor. Just before you do, you can, you can say that open up a, open up this particular file for me. I just opened a program. You can open a particular Word document. You can open up a particular sheet. You can open up whatever you want. So 
leaving this for you to do more experiments. But if I run it right now again, just for testing purposes, let's run it again. So it's just ran at this time because I requested it on demand. So reports can be run on time schedule, but if I want to test it as well, I can run it on demand as well. This is called on demand because I'm asking it right now. So there's nobody stopping you doing that. I can end it or I can disable it. So let me just disable it because I don't need it or I don't want to be bothered tomorrow. So I just disable it or I can do something else. So I can say that I can say that <laughs> I want to trigger it. I want to trigger. Now I'm, I'm editing it by right clicking on it and going to properties and I can do certain things. So when I click right click and properties and go here, it is opened like this trigger. I want to change it. I want to change it from daily. I want to change it monthly and I can do whatever I wanted to do, which is when I was initially setting it up. So I can change the schedule. If it is just an overkill for me, I can change it to weekly instead of a daily. Action, what programs to open, what file to open, what, what is the location of the program which you want to open. You can provide that. Uh, and last thing, history is, I haven't changed the history uh, that I want to log the history, but I can log the history. Did it run yesterday? Did it end the day before yesterday? Did it run last week? I can check the history of it. Right now it's not enabled, but I'm not bothered about it. So I currently disabled it. So I'm taking this same idea into Microsoft Azure. So if you take this idea to Microsoft Azure and keep your mind pretty much open that any report, any program, any script written by your developers at your office or some program that somebody provided you can be scheduled here. The script uh, basically are the more powerful way. So first of all, for that, you will need Azure automation. Uh, it is called, maybe I'll just say automation, automation account. So I need to set up this automation account. So just like the storage account, I have to create an automation account. So I'll click on create and create an automation account. So let's do that resource group. Let's leave it at that. Account name. Not there. Oh, I cannot give a dot in here. So I'll just say Kashan Auto or whatever I want to, and Canada Central is fine. And I'll say create. So now the receipt is here. I don't know how much it charges. I will actually be going to deleting it fairly soon. As I click create, it is going to create an automation account for me and it's getting created under AZ900. So I'm going to say, go to this resource. Once that is created, every time I am standing in Kashan Auto and uh run book i can create a run book so once i create a run book run book meanings run this program now there is something called once you know which program to run the second thing is called job what job you want to how, how or um, how you want to schedule it okay so run book and schedule work in conjunctions once you have run book ready you can schedule it so I haven't created a run book for a long time, but I will want to create a hello world run book or something. And so when I click on run book and create a run book, it says, what is the name of the book you create? Run book is just like a program that you want to shoot up. So it's like a notepad or something that you want to. So I'm just going to create run book number one, just say run book type. It says which programming language you want to open it. See if it works, and I'll say create this. So I'm going to create a run book which will be in Python. 
So once I do that, it has opened up the Python interface for me. So I can think of that on Microsoft uh, Azure, there is a Python platform available for me where I can code. So this is my runbook number one. And I'll say, let's say I'm just going to copy Python Hello World program. Just a script that I'm going to cheat from the internet. I don't want to type it. Let's see. So I'm going to paste it in here and say goodbye world or hello world or whatever. And then I will test it out. So once I'll test it out, let's see what happens. And I'll say start. It is right now, it takes a little time. I don't know why. It's even this just one line program. Maybe first time it takes a little bit more, but it is run, trying to maybe install Python or something in the background. So first time it takes time. Uh, usually you have to wait. So goodbye world is printed. So complete it and it, it is done. So I've made a very small Python script, which I just wanted to show you the example of runbook. My main purpose is not to explain you how Python works or anything like that. My main purpose was to show you how to create a runbook. So once that is done, test pane is done. You are testing the code. And once you are done, you can publish that. So if I'll publish that, it says that, are you sure this is the final, final of your script? So imagine you can have thousand lines of code in that um, in that run book or that script, but right now that script does only one thing. What it does, it, it does run the script that you have written. So if I'll say start one more time, and it says that no value provided, that's okay because there is no parameter or anything like that. So I'll just say, okay. So that run book is still running. I'm going to refresh. So test is done, but this is the first time after the publishing I'm running it. So it's, it still says started and they say completed. So I can say completed. Let's say the output, all jobs output will be displayed when the job completes. So I think it is still running. Yeah, here you go. That's the actual output goodbye world or whatever now i can see errors i can see warnings i can see logs what time it has run last time remember if i go back in this example here when the this last time ran so i can go in properties i know why well, i don't know why history is disabled but i can i could have enabled it Condition, action, what program to run, trigger, what date and time this program sh should trigger. So there is multiple triggers for that. And then this is the small, uh, this is the, and it is hidden. So I cannot see it because it's not appearing. Same idea has happened that this program and shows me last time when it is run, it is showing me the log. Next time when it is scheduled to run, it is showing me the log of that. So similar to that, very similar idea that last time when it was ran, were there any errors and task scheduler also shows you that. So I'm not going into back and forth in task scheduler anymore, but as you can see, you can see exception logs, warnings, errors, output, output is there. You don't need to provide any input because your program does not need any input at the moment. So I'll just be refreshed and be done with it because I'm not going to run it any more time. 5.57 p.m. it was ran. Right now it's 5.59. We already talked too many, two minutes on it. So I can go back. And now let's say if I need to refresh this list. Now here you are seeing that the run book that I created is there. But I have not scheduled it. So the script is ready. The script has no errors. Obviously it's just a one-liner script. Not too much about it not too much to talk about that script that we created is even if it's a thousand lines of code or one line of code 
it is now placed in the Python runbook that we created. Or I can create multiple runbooks, or if I want to import a runbook or create further runbooks or whatever. Right now, we don't have too many runbooks as well. So all the menus on the top are not mandatory at the moment. Now let's create the schedule. So over there, it asks you the schedule, but here I can create a company schedule as well. So I will go and create a schedule. Once I create, I have no schedule at the moment, but I can create the schedule. So I will add a schedule. And remember, please, I don't have any notes for it. So please make sure that you are following here. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to create a business calendar. Right. And you can create multiple calendars, one calendar for accounts receivable, one calendar for accounts payable, one for IT, one for blah, one for Christmas parties and whatnot. So business calendar and you can create with the description for my small business. This is the calendar and I want to start it at, I don't want to start at 630. Can I do it in the back in time? I have to check that out. It should not complain that you are creating the schedule in back of in, in, in the time prior. And I want it to be recurring calendar. Must be after. Okay, so it must should be after. That's why it is complaining. So I'll say, okay, let me create for 605 or something. The time must be after, okay, so right now. Okay, so it is saying the time must be after 6 or 6. Okay, <laughs> it's very picky, so I'll just create it 6 p.m. Uh, oh, sorry, 6 or 5. Sorry, I have to change it to 6 or 5 p.m. So it should be not complaining to me. Is it still complaining? Okay, so it is saying, yeah, it has to be one. It has to be. Okay, now it is happy. So it is 8 minute, eight more minutes before I do that. So I'll say maybe recurring every day and set expiration. I'm not setting any expiration. If I want to expire this calendar at the end of the year and I will ask somebody to start entering every new year, new events, that's their job. But I'm going to create a schedule right now. So I have created a schedule. So now it's take every time Azure does not refresh. You have to click a refresh. So business calendar is created and it's turned on at 6.10. So 6.10, we have a schedule that will happen. And let's see what is what has been, if I look at this, can I look at calendar view or something? No. So every day, 6.10 p.m., this event will trigger. But right now, there is no script associated with it. So I can go back to the run book and say, I want this run book to be linked to this schedule. So if I go here and link to schedule, it will bring me all the schedule link to your link your schedule, uh, link a schedule to your run book or configure parameter and running setting. Well, that's, we can look into this because we don't, we are not providing any parameters or any variables to it. So we are okay with that. Let's schedule it and let's schedule it at 6, 10 PM. So now it has been associated and I'll click okay. So right now time is 6.04 and I'm not going to start the run book. When I will come around 6.12 or 6.13, I should see that this run book has one more log to it because if I trigger it around 6.10, which I have already, and it is linked to the schedule, this run book or script will run. So it is whole world of good that it can do for me. I can write my SQL servers, or Microsoft Azure script. I can write my Python script. I can send an email to the boss. I can do so many automation in the morning. I can do my backups. I can do whatever I wanted to do. I want to take up something from my 
uh, Azure virtual machine and put it somewhere else. Also, all that sort of stuff can be done here. Uh, take a file from blob storage or not. So that is one powerful thing to have runbook. And runbooks are great for process automation. For runbooks, you have to write your own script. So it's it's nice to have because it's your baby. You will write your script in Python or in PowerShell. So Python is a scripting language as well. PowerShell is the scripting language as well. Whichever scripting language you prefer, you can create a runbook. Right now I have chosen Python, but you can choose PowerShell. And I think uh, I will give you a link today to work with uh, creating a PowerShell script. So we will see that uh, when we will, uh, when I will share the link with you. But uh, let's talk about, while we wait for it to be run, let's talk about a little bit on the exam. We have 10, 15 more minutes, or we can, we, we are not bound to it. We can just click refresh after when we are talking, we are done talking about the exam. So for the examination point of view, uh, 40 questions will be there. And maybe plus two short answer questions. So I will see if I will uh, add two small five to six line, very to the point answers from you guys. That is what I'm expecting. Uh, and what other plan is, is to take out uh, five questions from the quiz number one and five questions from quiz number two. Okay. So you will be, you will not be surprised with at least 10 questions. You will see, you will know that you have seen that in the past in quiz one and quiz two, and you guys have done all good in quiz one and quiz two already. Uh, other thing is I will not be testing you guys on anything to do practically on Azure. Everything will be available to you in a multiple choice or exploration or writing the answer. But I'm not going to ask you to go on Azure, find this and solve this problem in, for me in class and go and create an automation account or something like that. Not, not of that sort. General idea. What is Runbook? What does Runbook do? How we will link the schedule to the Runbook? What is the purpose of a schedule? What is trigger in Windows? Do we have a similar software available in Microsoft Windows or what we saw a combination of Runbook and schedule in Microsoft Azure? Your answer is yes. You just saw a task scheduler program. So something of that nature, something that you have not, you, you have not seen, you have seen, you just saw that. So something of that nature. How, how you will, what is the, what is the purpose of creating an automation account? What is the purpose of creating the storage account. The storage account is for using different types of storages that are available. Automation account is purpose is to create some automation scripts. Right? What is the purpose of MDM and Intunes? General basic idea. What is Active Directory? What is Azure Active Directory? How can we sync between the local Active Directory versus the Active Directory on the cloud? What feature we have? What is the name of that feature we have? And in Intunes, I gave you two videos yesterday that how you can create, how you can bulk create the user. If you have seen those videos, one of the video mentions that you download the template 
in a CSV format. Enter the mandatory fields which are required to create that account. Once you are done and filled up that template, you upload that template to Azure and Azure will create all those accounts. You can either upload a file to a blob storage every morning you up with the with the so you have branches of your company all across the world thousands of people thousands of employee join your company and thousands of employee leave the company it can actually happen because you have thousands of employee across the globe if i give this task to one person to add all the employees who joined yesterday please create their accounts in microsoft azure how much time it will take for that particular guy morning till evening he will be doing that same thing if there is a way where different offices can just keep entering into the file and runbook will take that file and run the process automation on that file so that it can automatically create all those users with the default username and password so that they can log in or username and password of their own choice and send out the email to those guys that account is created so you can create this kind of process automation and in intuos we looked at windows at autopilot what does windows auto, auto autopilot can help you with autopilot can auto configure the whole entire system for you so you don't have to keep installing one program at a time microsoft office is done adobe acrobat is done now install this now install that now install this now install that if you have to do it on 100 computers every day because you are 100 computer 100 people joining to the to the company so all those 100 people will require laptops some will be in the remote location so they will not be available in the office so automation can be done to send out the laptops to their required addresses just provide the address laptop will be packed and ready in the warehouse automation program will send out the email to the that it's already been shipped out this is actually happening in amazon a lot of they are shipping it out all across the globe let's see if the schedule is run see this at 6:10 pm it triggered and within 14 seconds within 14 seconds hello world is being done for me second time so that's the advantage of having a run book imagine if it would be a report and a pdf file with the, all the new employees who started in the company it would have emailed to me at 6:10 pm in the in this morning i can change the schedule to 8 am in the morning or 7 am so every morning i i'll come i'll have an email sitting in my in my inbox but i don't want too many emails as well i don't want 10 emails to be sitting most important and most uh, priority emails should be sitting in here <coughs> i can automate as much as i want six or one month, one year down the road if i would have 10 requests i will have 10 emails sitting like this so there has to be a control from the management as well that they want not they do not want every freaking email that that they need only the priority emails but there is no restriction or stopping in that a very handy tool to have now runbook is done any question further related to exam you can ask as i have given you uh and offense that 
Rest assured, 10 questions will be coming from the previous two quizzes which you have. And rest of the 30 questions will be very surface level questions about asking you some of these questions which I just gone over. If you have any further questions, keep asking about the exam. I know because everybody gets tensed when they think about the exam. Uh, so if you have any further, I will uh, go ahead and continue to show something, some other uh, topics in here. So at the personal level, you can try task scheduler to begin with, and then you can uh, work on some other uh, you can work on it on the runbook time. Runbook made it really global. Task is scheduled on your system, just kept it to your system. Have you guys created Entunes yesterday for the practice? Uh, Any one of you have worked on it? For the slides that I've shared, uh, video that I shared, have anybody had any issues creating MDM or uh, Intune's account? Do try it, it will not uh, charge you anything. That's one thing because I have it running for the last four days, it hasn't. Uh, and do watch the lecture from me from yesterday as well. If you haven't, one more time just for reassurance uh, because it's only the two videos that I shared, not much uh, knowledge of the PowerPoint. So I do recommend that you go over that fast forward me or something and uh, yeah no you don't have to worry about the charges so uh yeah final exam final exam will cover all the weight that is missing out so quizzes that i made for five i am increasing the weight for it to be 10 assignments that i made out to be 15 each, I'm going to make 20 each, which you already have done good. So two quizzes and two assignments are already 60. So 40% I will be putting it towards the final exam, out of which 10% again is, uh, yeah, it will not charge. Yeah, it will not charge you anything. And you are actually canceling your subscription anytime very soon anyways i will not i will say that before when is our final exam so maybe um yeah just cancel it tomorrow so any just cancel i'm going to cancel my subscription soon after my class tomorrow because 26 i will be just conducting the exam only if you have any questions i might need to revive it but other than that i will cancel it uh so i think you guys all created around 10th or 11th so 14 days free trial is is good uh but it ha for me you have seen it it's not gone over even 10 dollars yet so i'm okay with that uh but yeah if if it uh as far as i went on and checked and looked at it and other charges and i i, I kind of showed you the proof that it hasn't charged me for the issues uh but I think, uh, but I believe that if I cancel the subscription, nothing will be charged. So do that. Uh, if you're not, if, if it's okay for just one lecture, just watch my video instead of doing it with your own hand. But do watch it so that it will give you a knowledge about uh, what Intune does. So you have a little bit of preparation for the exam. If not, you are not doing it practically. My uh, 
video on the lecture will be enough for you to navigate. All um, right. So would you suggest that we go over the entire lectures for the review? All the lectures? I mean, like, um, is it sufficient to do the PowerPoints and the videos that you have on D2L? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, because I've covered everything that I covered in the class and the videos are also just a propagation of it. So uh, not too much difference. Um, Yeah, so I have uh, expanded it because I have a lot more topics I realized that to cover because if I just keep taking quizzes and the assignments and keep you guys busy in that, then you will achieve nothing. So that is why you have already expanded view of 60% standing uh, already been marked um, instead of 5% five, 5% 5 of the quizzes. And same thing I will do in the next course that I'm going to teach. Um, uh, but yeah, let's look at the top one more topic today. Keywords. Uh, how to create a keyword? What is keywords? Means is that I'm just going to go into the topic directly. So let me first go to AZ900, and this is my resource group, and get rid of the automation account. I think this is my automation account. When is that created? Oh, I can add a filter or something. Yeah. Function app, run book. These are the two things that I can do. I was working with keywords a couple of days ago, so that's why I, uh, but I don't see if I can delete it because it's just showing me delete the resource group, which I don't want. So let me go back to the automation account itself and delete it from here. So once I will delete it, everything inside this automation account will go away because if I click on this auto auto resource, it is going inside it, it has run book and the schedule. But if I go ahead and delete this by itself, then everything inside this will be deleted. I don't know what's the promises of the charges here. So it is doing its thing and it's gone now as well. So it is not a drastic ch ch charges for uh, MDM and Intunes as well. It is right now. If it is there, let me just cancel that out. If it is there, yeah, I can cancel my MDM Azure and it hasn't charged me anything yet. Anyways, I can vouch for that. So I'm going to cancel that subscription as well. Reason, just to testing purpose or something. others cancel the subscription so MDM and Intune subscription is also getting cancelled <clears throat> yeah it's been cancelled so it will take me back to my subscriptions again eight or nine dollars that I'm currently standing on so all right, so that is pretty much it. Then I'll go to the new topic called Keyword. And keyword, Keywords is uh, at the start level, I can tell you what is keyword, keyword is. So what Keyword does is that you create, you create an encrypted, you create an encrypted key. So let's open up this keyword. Right now, I don't have, uh, I do have one keyword, so I'm going to delete that. So I can go here. We have to click here first. And I can delete this keyword. This was my testing keyword, so I'm going to delete. Now, if I want to go and create a new keyword, I can create a new keyword. And it's under this and keep it under this description. I'll just say e vault to again 
if somebody this is really ordinary for me because if somebody has created a key vault already in the past on their azure portal it is getting mingled with that but if it is saying that i will just say that and i want to create it in the region central pricing tier standard it's really almost free depending upon how much you will be using it and think other than that Vault access policy. I want to use it with uh, Vault access policy. I remember that's what I did because when I was doing the recommended one, it wasn't working. So I'll say review and create. So now it has been created. I'll go create. And now once the once the key vault will get created, key vault ABM, it's now getting created. So key vault means that for the encrypt for the given text that you type, it's a kind of a cipher key that nobody else will have access to it until you provide that key with the link. So if I'll go back to the resource and say this is my key vault. Um secret key or something yeah i think key vault and yeah so i can go and create a secret key secret key meaning uh, will not be able to view so i'll create a new secret key i'll generate a new secret key and i'll say secret And as I say, I love Azure. So when I type it, it's a kind of a password. And I can set the activation date at what time this key will become active and what time this key will be expired. Or if somebody wants to access this phrase, they will not be able to see that phrase. So I said, okay. Um, Activation date is okay. Leave it at that. Let's keep it active for now. 640. It will 62740. It has already done. So let's create it. It's activated for today. So this key secret is enabled. So now when I go inside this key secret and click here. I know this, this me, the under here, it says I love uh, Azure. If I copy this, let's see what happens. If I copy this and go to the notepad, because I am the owner of it, I have access to it. I love Azure is the one that I, I created it, so I have access to it. But if you, if, you, if I'm not the owner of it, I will not be able to, I will not be able to see that key until somebody provides me the link. So this is the encrypted link that it has created for me. So if I want to send this uh, very highly encrypted key or to somebody or, or some other colleague in my other part of the world, I can create that key and did, I will not share it with anyone. I will send this as a link to them instead of texting them or doing, you know, telling them over the phone, I can send it this way. So one other thing that it has, I know because I am the creator of it. If I click on show secret value, it is actually showing me in a very highlighted way that the key value is I love Azure. And I can hide it. I'll, I will leave it at as hidden. My main problem that I was trying to, I was trying to use this is that I copied this link and send it to another incognito browser so that I can 
access this secret key, but I was not able to get it because I was getting some errors. So the workaround was for me, which is not the perfect solution, but I'm going to show you anyways. My main idea was that I can share this key with the help of hyperlink, right? And that's a secret identifier link. That's what it says. I said, okay. So I said, okay, I'll leave it at that. I come back. Um, and let's say, go back to home. Key vaults ABM. This is where I'm standing. Now, I was trying to give access to another person in the company by sharing them with the link. So let's say this is Kashan that is logged in. Remember, I do have another user in the company. If I go to Azure Active Directory, there is another user that I created uh, whose name was Joe Smith. And I wanted to share it with Joe Smith. So I logged in into my incognito window or in, in on another laptop or on Microsoft Edge. I want to log in with this gentleman on Azure portal. So it has started to ask me that this guy does not have Azure subscription. So Joe Smith, that you want to start another, uh, another uh, subscription and then give them the credit card information and all that. But it shouldn't do that because he's the part of this company already. So it's already covered or not, but it's not covered. So it was not letting me do that. So one, one thing that I discovered, so instead of fighting around with my credit card and all the other information, what I thought of is that I'll go back to my key walls and I give this guy, I give this guy in the access policies. I went in here in the access policy and I added that I want to give secret key management permission to that. And I can give him, I can give him some other permissions, but I don't know to what extent this mean. But when you will see that when I'll click on the secret keys or management, this is the highest level of secret key that I can give him. So he can create key, he can create secret certificates and management, whatever, but I'll say, okay. So as soon as I did that, I say, wow, okay. So these are the permissions that I can give to Mr. Joe Smith. So let me just create an access policy first. So let me create the access policy and I want to give it to Mr. Joe Smith. There's another guy in my company and I click next. So now this guy will have all, will have the similar permissions as I have. Ideally, that's what I don't want. I just wanted to share the information with the link, but I was getting uh, issue with that. Now, Joe Smith has equal permissions as I have on my, on this keyboards. So now if I say, okay, I'll go to Microsoft Edge. Um, I the browser on my system. And I was testing and playing around with that, that I want it to be shared with the help of link instead of um, given that I remember another password for Mr. Joe Smith. Let's see if I can log in to Azure portal. And now I need to get this gentleman's full name. What's his name? I don't remember the password again for Joe Smith. So I will reset that password for that guy. So if I'll go back actually before, because I am forgetting the password again. So I am going to go in Azure Active Directory. I'll go here. And I'll say users and I'll say Joe Smith. And 
can I change his password? Reset the password. There it is. So it uh, will be assigned a temporary password. Once we change it, sign into temporary password. Click the reset password button. Okay, so let's reset the password. So it says now reset. So this guy has given me a temporary password. And because I pass password that, password forget that. So as soon as I will sign in, incorrect password. Uh, is that the same password? Yeah, one eight three eight. Okay, okay. Uh, and what's the username? Yeah, principal username. That is what I want. So I can copy this username. Let's do it one more time. I don't know whether I have to enter this or no. Joe Smith, that's fine. Belonging to this member. So let's see if I have any issues. Go back. This is the guy that we are talking about. Next. And password, I'll copy one more time. Paste that password, sign in. Here you go. It is letting me enter. So current password is that KK. I'll enter the password so that I don't forget. Hopefully it accepts the password policy. Next. So action required. Your additional policies and security information, yes, for now. If I say no, it will not let me log in. I'm signing in. I'm signing in as a Joe Smith authenticator. So now I have to use for Joe Smith, I need to follow those Google authenticator policies. If I don't, it will not let me sign in. Have you guys used Google Authenticator? If you have. So let me try one more time and I'll cancel that time. Zoo portal, login as Joe Smith. Ask me later. I don't want to. Okay, so I'm good. For next 11 days, it is saying I'm good. So I'm going to connect but it will force me to have two-factor authentication set on my phone so for now it has let me go so sigh of breather i don't care i'm going to key vaults because this is the permission that was given to me from the uh from the manager so as soon as i go here and i will say subscription let's see if i can no i don't i have to file my own subscription this mr joe smith has to file his own subscription has to have his own account because it's not treating him as that and now mr joe smith is sign in ask me later i have still 11 days to left with And it's asking me all bunch of questions here, which I don't want to go through, but let's see. So this is the test in trial and that has to happen for this because as you saw, Azure portal is showing that vault key that I shared with this gentleman. So this is not the username and password. It was Joe Smith on Microsoft. Ever phone number is required. Does it require? Can I skip that? This was my address, my province. Let's see if it can leave me without that. I'm very fearful that it will ask me the credit card for Mr. Joe Smith, which I don't have. So let's see. I would like, I would like. It is not letting me move forward until I fill out some further information. I just, I don't know what to, the field is required, so I have to give my phone number. 
let me enter my phone number and let's see if it is going to let me do that. So see this number of painful steps because there is no test environment for us. And further, so first name, last name, phone number is entered. I don't want to be texted, but it is going to be doing that until I do the two-factor authentication to that. So text me, please. Let's see what happens. So I am going to get a two-factor authentication password on this. It promised me that it can leave me for a few days, but it hasn't. So four, three, five. Oops, let me There you go. So it is stuck at that same point that I need to provide credit card information for that gentleman. I'm not going to proceed with it, but as you saw, I was able to share the information to Mr. Joe Smith. And where I can verify that and I can vouch for that is that here. As you can see, Key Vaults is available in the very beginning of as I log in. And when I click on that, I want to view that. It says that no, before you do that, you have to be, you have to be signed up with Mr. Joe Smith as whatever pilot. So I ended up, I did not even move forward, but I can, I, I, it has given me a little bit of assurance that yes, key vault has been passed from there to here. So I'll leave it at that. But yeah, you can sign in and do that. But um, other than that, so key vaults are the good uh, way to share the information. At the moment, the way we are sharing the information is, the, is not the most ideal way. We need to have two accounts now to make sure that key vault information is shared across the company's employees like that. And they need to be part of the company and everything. So this guy is the part of the company and he should follow under the same umbrella of my credit card information. But when I try to sign it up, it does ask me that I need to provide my own credit card information, but really it shouldn't because I have given him the full permission and the guy was created under my company. So I need to further explore what kind of role assignment that I need to do or authentication method, or he should not be charged or anything. So I leave it at that. But yes, keyboards is another uh, way to set, send out the information. I'm not sure if you guys know about this, but I mean, I'm going to share with you guys. There's a website called One, One Time. And it's not related to Azure, but it's a very secure website. If you go One Time, and under One Time, you it's a one time means it will generate a link for you one time. So let's say this is your password. Let's say password ABC123, just a random password. And if I say generate link, once you generate this link and copy this link and send it to the guy on WhatsApp or you send him on the text message or email or any other way you share this. So let me open up an incognito, new incognito window and I'll paste this link here. So it says that this message will self destruct after you once view it. Once you view it, you cannot use this note again. So you, you create, you created a secret key you send that link of that secret key to me via any different message or method that you want me to, want to send. 
and then so you are not tasked typing the actual password to the person on your text message or on whatsapp or on the email you are just sharing the link once i open up this link because i'm the receiver of that link if i click on view note it is going to show me this note i can copy this note to whatever clipboard but now let's see if i want to say close it when i go back to incognito window one more time and paste that link this note is not available to me this note was last accessed on this and this time and note may only be viewed once once it was destroyed so i cannot so it is was one one time information i got it i got it if i if i don't saved it if i not saved it i lost it but it was last opened at seven um, whatever 745 cdt and now it's not available to you so one time is a good one we used to exchange our passwords with that so if somebody asked me hey can you send me my password for this i forget about this password send me the password i don't send or text or do that password that way unless it's encrypted so it's encrypted password one time self destructing link for sharing the sensitive information